In the months leading up to the election, Donald Trump and his campaign tried their very best to distance themselves from the 900-page conservative manifesto known as Project 2025, claiming that he knew nothing about it. I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, That's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it. This is a document I know nothing about. It's called Project 25. I heard about it a week ago and has nothing to do with me whatsoever. I don't know what the hell it is. It's Project 25. He's involved in Project. And then they read some of the things and they are extreme. I mean, they're seriously extreme. But I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it. Well, most of us immediately called that out as BS, not just because Trump lies like he breathes, but because one of Project 2025's authors was caught on hidden camera saying that this was all part of the plan. I expect you here 10 more times from the rally, the president, you know, distancing himself from the left's boogeyman of Project 2025. Yeah. Um, and you're not worried about that? I'm not worried about it. Okay. He's running against the brand. He is not running against any people. Okay. Uh, He is not running against uh, any institutions. It's interesting. He's, in fact, not even opposing himself to a particular policy. Well, here we are, two weeks post-election. And what do you know? Turns out he was right. Trump is now choosing several people connected to Project 2025 for key roles in his new administration, including that guy that you just saw in that video there, Russ Vout who Trump just moments ago announced as his pick to lead the Office of Management and Budget. As NBC News is reporting today, Trump's transition team is taking suggestions for potential hires from the extensive personnel database created by Project 2025. Joining me now is Angelo Carasoni, president and CEO of Media Matters. Um, Angelo, um, voila, it turns out the Trump administration uh, is full of Project 2025 people. Tom Homan, his pick for Borders are, was a contributor. John Ratcliffe, Trump's nominee for CIA director, contributor. Brendan Carr, Trump's pick to run the federal communications contributor, wrote the chapter on the FCC. Um, Pete Huckstra, his pick for ambassador to Canada, contributor. And Stephen Miller, his pick for deputy chief of staff for policy, contributor. And Russ Vote, of course, obviously. And then I will add the person who put together this personnel database that he's putting together, John McEntee also tied to it. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I think and I think part of the reason why it's important to note that their denials didn't hold up and that they're beginning to implement this is that it's so much bigger than that policy book. You know, Project 2025 was really the professionalization of MAGA. And it was designed to sort of, you know, squeeze as much juice out of the orange out of that first year, not just to implement their policies, but to literally shock the system so that they have smooth runway after that, to basically subdue all and, and eliminate all of the safeguards and norms that would typically prevent or slow down or be speed bumps in sort of undermining democracy or misusing the government or all sorts of other things. And so this latest example is, you know, you had the policy book, which was all the ideas, the aspirations of Project 2025. So now we can use the validation that they're moving forward with it to figure out where they're going. And here's where they are. The other part of it was the personnel database. And it's not just the names that are going to be talked about in the news. It's going to be hundreds or thousands of individuals. And Mm -hmm. that was really always the tell is that it didn't matter whether or not they disavowed Project 2025. The fact is, they all the personnel that Trump could have hired were already part of that project. They had been pre-vetted. They, they had been determined where they'd be maximally slotted in. Um, the personnel is policy, and those are going to be the people that implement it. And now tonight with the news about Russ Vaught, it's worth noting that he wrote a, a piece of Project 2025 called The Playbook, which was designed to be kept private. It was the 180, the first, the first 180 days look like. It's the compilation of all the executive orders, all the internal instructions for agencies, all the legal memos that are required to sort of legitimize or validate instructions. It is going to be the full-scale implementation of what everybody was talking about in the summer that they didn't want to happen, which was Project 2025. Right, and I mean, they, and, and what it means in a sense is that Donald Trump has a plug-and-play presidency. Like he doesn't have to do a whole lot. It's already all written out. He's going to have the people in place. He's going to move out the career people who would stand in the way of some of the things that are outright illegal or unconstitutional. He'll just have his loyalists after he does the step, which is to get rid of, they've said, 50,000 some odd career employees. All right, let's start with with Russ Vaught. Um, Russ Vaught, who um, my colleague at The Washington Post, Jeff Stein, has, uh, I believe it's on, on Twitter, just pointed out all these things about Russ Vaught, notably 
asserted presidential authorities to unilaterally claw back spending without Cong Congress, said, quote, we are living in a post-constitutional time. Um, Aggressive proponent of using Schedule F to strip protections from much of the federal workforce. And you can see the rest there uh, on the screen. But are you concerned about Vaughn's ties to Project 2025? Yeah, we said it all along that this was Donald Trump's 2025. He tried to and lied. He does that often. You know, he's a stellar con man, even though he's the president elect. He said he had nothing to do with it. Yet you see Voight as you will see others who were instrumental in putting Project 2025 together, being a part of his administration, again, Jonathan, because they were there before. And that's why it is so dangerous now. They were there before, but they had some guardrails, and now they think that they figured out how to get rid of those guardrails so that they can empower Donald Trump so that he is not like a president of the United States, but they would like him to be like a Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I didn't read that my uh, Jeff Stein put it there, um, um, up there, put it back up on the screen, that um, Russ Vaught has crafted plans for Trump to deploy the military to quash civil unrest and seize more control over the Justice Department. Um, the You know, deploying the military to quash civil unrest, that's something that Pete Hegseth, um, thanks to Jonathan Chait at The Atlantic, having read you know, all of his books. That's something that the defense secretary um, pick that Trump has given us, Pete Hegseth, he's down for that, too. How concerned are you that people are being put in place who are going to do things that are um, unconstitutional, but also un-American? Well, that's because those individuals that Donald Trump chooses he doesn't want those that pledge themselves to the United States of America. He wants those that pledge themselves to Donald J. Trump. And that's where the danger really goes in. He wants loyalists. He's picked no one really based upon their experience. The only thing that he looks at when they give his resume is, will you be loyal to me? Mm -hmm. And so you have to question what anybody that he's put in place, because everyone that he's put in place has had a role previously with him. And as he says, I mean, he doesn't hide it. He says the most important thing to him and whoever he picks is loyalty, not to the United States of America, but to Donald Trump. And that's a dangerous situation. Why? Who else looks to want to have people that's loyal? Does Vladimir Putin like people to be loyal to him? You know what happens to them? If they don't go with him, they do go after them. In fact, many of them fall out of windows at times. I was about to say, you know, off balconies so, and things. You know, Orbán, who visited him down in Margo Largo, mm -hmm. go check out what's happening there. You know, his best friend, who he had a bromance with, Kim Jong-un. What happens in North Korea? These are the people that he's associated himself with, and this is what he admires. I got I to get you on, on, on two more things. One, we played the long clip of Nikki Haley uh, talking smack about Tulsi Gabbard. Did 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 Nikki Haley say anything wrong uh, or untrue about Tulsi Gabbard? She said exactly right. That's why I am puzzled. She endorsed Donald Trump. <laughs> and as you've correctly stated, she helped put him there because she could have taken the position that everyone that was close to Donald Trump that had pledged allegiance to the United States, General Kelly, General Milley, you know, they took so folks, this is this is troubling for Trump. And it's also troubling for the voters that voted for him. This is another I told you so moment. We said it doesn't matter what Trump proclaimed. Project 2025 is going to form a big part of his program. You know, it's 900 pages, so I'm sure that some parts of it won't be implemented because, you know, it would be impossible to do it all in four years, even if you were a dictator, blah, 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 blah. But like this idea that Trump never read it, that Trump's team had no connection, that Trump disagreed with most of it. He was saying that, guys, because Donald Trump is not as dumb as we sometimes think, and he understood that connection to that Tr tr crazy document was political malfeasance, right? That it was politically disastrous. It was career ending. So he lied. 
I don't, know, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. And now that he's in, he's bringing in the architects of the program. And his own staff have admitted, his own allies have admitted that, yes, that will be forming a rough blueprint of the Trump administration. But here's the thing, though. That's not popular. The proposals in it are not what the people who voted for Trump actually want, at least the people that made him president. The base, maybe, but the people that switched from the Democrats to the Republicans, the people who didn't vote before but voted now, the new Trump voters, they did not vote for Project 2025. They voted for lower prices, and this will not get it to them. Donald is going to piss off people at world record speed even faster than in 2017. 